Well, hey everybody, thanks for uh, having us in. As David said, I'm Jeff, and he already introduced the rest of the team. Uh, primarily, Alana and I have been working with uh, David, Carl, and Allison on some marketing efforts, which you've all been uh, part of and kind of seen us wandering around here, uh, team photos and things like that. Um, we've got some really powerful stuff to roll out and talk to you about today. First, we're gonna give a little background about who we are and how we've been working together, and then uh, we're gonna get into some cool surprises. So what you need to know basically about what we do at Kinesis is that we're driven by mission. Our mission is transformation. We are technically a marketing company, but we like to work much deeper than just uh, traditional forms of marketing. Uh, most companies that we work with are struggling with one of three what we call wicked problems. They're sort of pervasive problems that hit just about every business owner at one point or another. Um, not all of them apply to everyone. So basically these three wicked problems fall, fall into a couple categories. The first one is brand remarkability or what we call best kept secret. Uh, we're an amazing company, but nobody knows about us, so they're getting the wrong idea about us. We don't know how to talk about ourselves. Another one is uh, concentration risk, or the 800-pound gorilla. Many manufacturers and uh, companies of the like have like one gigantic client, and if that client were ever to reduce its uh, spend or to move to another company, it would devastate um, most companies. And so we help them to diversify their portfolio and make sure that they have lots of different support from different kinds of clients. Uh, and the last one is margin compression, which is probably best described as competing on price. Um, if in your market you can't say we're different because or we have a unique approach because, then inevitably people are just going to make a decision about what's the cheapest. Um, so these are the three main problems that we can use our skills and strategy and marketing to help companies um, thrive and get past these kind of issues. We've been doing this for a long time through a method that we call marketing from the inside out, going all the way back to 20, 2010. Um, our company experienced a downturn in the recession, and it caused us to reevaluate uh, re how we do marketing. Uh, most the standard approach of marketing is kind of to create a bunch of noise outside, you know, put up a new website, get a bunch of ads out there <clears throat> in order to generate leads and start bringing attention back to the brand. Um, but as the recession showed us and what we've seen since is that if you don't have an internal support system to handle that attention, things start to fall apart. Um, if people have a brand experience online and, then, and it's positive, but then they uh, ring up a company's phone call and they're being treated rudely, the rudeness is what really matters. And so no matter what efforts we did to kind of put the message out externally, if there wasn't an internal component, nothing happened. And so this led us into a greater conversation around what creates actual health and life for most brands and companies and led us to create this system marketing from the inside out. Um, what makes marketing really work powerfully is when you start from what matters the most, the unchanging uh, personal nature of the thing. Um, and we like to start there with mission, values, and vision. Your mission is, you know, why are you doing this? Why do you get up every morning? For Kinesis, we're in the business of transformation. We like to help companies transform and become uh, the company they're meant to be. Um, your values are the decision-making tools that you use on a regular basis to decide what to do and what is best for the company and what's best in your role. And finally, the vision is that point on the map. What are we driving to? Where are we taking this, this ship as we uh, all work together? Once we have these established and we can roll these out and get consensus on our teams, uh, then people stop being just employees and they start being a culture of A players. Really, by having our core fundamentals figured out, we know who is uh, gonna fit really well, what makes somebody successful in our environment, and it uh, allows us to impart culture in a way that, as you've experienced here, it becomes a part of you and you wanna express it and uh, continue to be um, contributing to it. And when that happens, you stop providing customer service and you start providing remarkable delivery. And remarkable delivery goes way above and beyond. And it comes from a place of being empowered. You're empowered to help your customers in a way that maybe other companies can't because you are united on their mission, values, and vision, and you are a part of the culture of A players and you know what to do. And when customers experience this, different than when we're creating a bunch of marketing noise and sending activities in and they're not having a good experience, when they have a great experience, when they are confronted with remarkable delivery, they stop being customers and they start being raving fans. Uh, and this is really important for a number of reasons. One is the first thing that a raving fan does is they start pushing business back into your company, whether that be a reorder or telling their network and friends to come check this company out. Um, that's really powerful because in the long term, it's much less expensive to reorder with a new customer than it is to start, a new, a, or sorry, reorder with an existing customer than to start up a whole new customer again. The reason we're bringing this up is because we're going to talk a lot about brand today, and I want to make sure we all understand that when we talk about brand, we're not talking about uh, the external aspects of a brand, like a website or a logo. First, we start with this. This is the, the ecosystem, the culture that we're wanting to build. And we've been working together for, has it been a whole year already? 
uh, digging into these elements uh, with the culture here uh, to really bring some magical things about. When we started our work with Automation Resources Group, kind of looking into what we were trying to do, um, this may look familiar to you. This is kind of how we were introduced through David and Carl, um, that this is a company on the move. You had already done some work with uh, an agency called uh, Conveyor to draft some messaging around your mission and values. Um, it was this concept of uh, innovate, working with innovators to create revolutionary machines. You obviously moved into this new space and have this amazing uh, mural put up. So lots of really good positive action. And the goal of working together with us was to take that into the next phase. What are we going to do next? How do we strategically position this company to go forward into the future? And so we start like we do with all companies, we start with who you are, the mission, values, and vision. And though you've done a lot of work around that, we wanted to, um, our approach is always an archeological approach. If we tell people what their mission and values and visions are, then it becomes like a poster on the wall, like waves crashing, inspiration, or something like that. The best way is to ar be archeological about it. We want to uncover what's already active, what's already working for you, and articulate it and expand upon it. Similar to your mission that you had been working on previously, we found that it is true, you're on a mission of revolution. That ARG is on a mission to revolutionize the automation industry. Uh, you're not trying to approach your work in an ad hoc method like many of your competitors. You're trying to create total machine perspectives and new projects and push the boundaries of what is possible with robot robotics and automation. And if these new processes are really going to take hold, it's going to take an, a revolution in the industry to change their mind about how we approach this, uh, this work that we're doing. I think that's a really powerful to me, that's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> also true. <laughs> also true. <laughs> we also dug into your values because, um, you know, honestly, even though you had done a ton of work to create a giant mural, it was worth it to look and go, but are they true? Are they right? Is this what's really happening here? And most of the time, honestly, we try to break values down to a much smaller number. We want to have about four and want to keep them really memorable. But when we dug in, these are awesome values and they build upon each other in a really amazing way. And we can see them living and active in your work uh, and in your culture. We did a lot of work with you in terms of like doing interviews. Some of you probably got phone calls uh, talking to you directly, um, talking to your customers and, and uh, uh, people you, you work with. And we found that this was all true. This is all happening on a daily basis, which is pretty remarkable. And finally, we talked about the vision that the vision of this place is really wrapped up in this team, uh, this wolf pack of hungry minds ready to go dominate. Um, when we look ahead at ARG, we want ARG to be an integral force in the automation industry. We want people to call you because you have good ideas, you have amazing ways of doing things that are different than everybody else. And we want that reputation to grow so that everybody thinks of you when they think of new and amazing and magical automation solutions. Um, as we go forth from there, what we want to start building out is brand expression. And the best way that we can do that in marketing, um, whether you know this or not, marketing depends really heavily on stories. Um, stories are super powerful. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, educational components to show you this, but one thing to keep in mind is like if you're leaning on just data, you know, companies that are out there promoting just data, 50% more, 25% less, that only accesses really two parts of your mm -hmm. brain. But when you start telling stories, it accesses up to eight different parts of your brain because you start to make associations. You know, if I say that I was a kid and I grew up in a poor neighborhood with a really rundown playground, you've probably seen a rundown playground and your mind is already reaching for comparisons of how rusty the bolts were in that time maybe you cut yourself on the swings. Uh, or if I say that I walk into my mom's house when I was in high school and about two times a week I'd walk in and the house would just smell like cookies because she'd be baking, she'd love to bake chocolate chip cookies. A lot of times you can start to kind of smell chocolate chip cookies and get hungry for them. Uh, just through the saying. And so in order for us to build the archetype for ARG, or the story, we have to create a character, and that character is the archetype. Um, and so we go through this exercise with our clients because it really helps us focus what we're doing and where we're bringing things home. And so first I just want to introduce you to the different archetypes. <laughs> These are the 12 archetypes that we uh, mainly work in. And uh, you probably run into archetypes like this on a daily basis. Maybe you needed to get a package that had to be there today. And so you go to FedEx, the hero, because they're there for you. They're going to get your package sent out on time. Or you're watching a Super Bowl commercial, and there's a guy washing his hair, and suddenly he's on a horse, you know, like Old Spice. That's the Jester brand. And some of the best comparisons I like to show you of how powerful archetypes can be is really when you think about it in the context of the candy aisle. Uh, if there was only one candy bar and it was chocolate, you'd buy it because chocolate is awesome. But that's not what's happening. Uh, when you go into the candy aisle, there's hundreds of candy bars for you to choose from, and you have to pick at a glance. 
And so on the wrapper, they're not going to tell you what their mission values and vision are, or their mission for the future, or how they treat their people. They have to communicate to you what they're like, or what your experience you can get out of it at a glance. And so you can see the archetypes that work in these, in these brands like Kit Kat, as they represent themselves as the every person, the regular guy. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Let's all go hang out and eat some chocolate. Sounds pretty good. Um, Snickers mm -hmm. is the hero, packed with peanuts. Hungry, grab a Snickers. And all their marketing and all their efforts are about how they're here for you, how they're going to support you and make things happen. Or maybe it's Bounty, which is like a, the lover, whisking you away to an exotic location full of coconuts and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, so as we dug into the different elements of this brand, your mission, your values and vision, the personalities uh, present at work, we really settled on the archetype of the magician. What you do here is magical. The magician archetype defies the imagination. They pull on ancient knowledge that may not be readily available to an audience in order to provide solutions that seem to come from nowhere. And that when people engage with uh, magician brands, the most common response is delight. I had no idea you could do that. And that was one of the things we heard a lot when we were doing interviews, especially with their customers, that oftentimes this team will go into an environment, maybe even not even specifically a BNR environment, and provide solutions that are well outside their expectations of what you can do for them. And that's magical. That's pretty powerful. So as we build on this idea of the magician, we can use this to start to create a story for the ARG brand that really makes it relevant and drives it home. And so the next aspect of this is to find just that. What story is this magical archetype coming into? Brand stories allow us to kind of create a narrative. Um, I'll be very clear, we don't often, ever, really ever, say that story out loud. Some of the brands we've worked with, their story is like Pan, Pan Am, who opened up the world through travel and exploration. We don't ever say Pan Am. We just want to be able to find something we can uh, link to emotionally, thematically, where people already have associations and kind of bring those elements together as we start building out our narrative. So as we looked at this brand, this radical team uh, doing amazing things, this very minimal um, color palette, and the, <laughs> the magical approach and impact that you're wanting to see on the world, we settled on the brand story of functionalism. This may be familiar to you. I've seen some books laying around, but you're all familiar with Dieter Rahm's Braun. Um, in the 1950s, Dieter Rams and his cohorts uh, started this movement of functionalism with an aim of getting past all the clutter, getting past all the built-in uh, breakdowns of, of the way products were being developed at the time, and to get down to what really matters most in order to create a purely functional object. The idea was that the beauty of the object was found in its purpose, in its function, and that if we can get down to what it's supposed to do and start there, and erase everything else, we can create something really remarkable that will stand the test of time. And to their point, this, this aesthetic and this mindset, has we can see it all the way into Apple today, of creating simple, easy to use technology. Uh, one of the things that you can recognize when you're looking at a functionalist design is there's no instructions. He was one of the ones who pioneered this idea that like you don't even need anything around the dial. People will figure it out that if they click, it turns on, and then the volume goes up. And really putting a lot of um, faith in the audience to understand and to be at one working with these pieces. We see a lot of correlations between what you're doing in automation. Instead of creating ad hoc designs, pulling on disparate pieces and trying to sell a bunch of parts to everyone, you're trying to get it down to its functional essence. You're trying to look into what matters most in these designs and trying to actually solve real problems. And that's a magical thing that is revolutionary in its simplicity. Once we have this idea of a narrative and a story, we can start to create this narrative through imagery. And so for us in the first round of this, that boils down to what, what kind of uh, brand approaches can we pull together to start telling the story through visuals, through language. And we went through a lot of rounds on this. I just wanted to share with you some of the, some of the working models. As you can see, I'm starting to bring in this idea of really simple backgrounds, some really uh, sexy, simplistic, cool photographs, which we've already worked on with you guys a little bit. Um, and wanting to highlight just that whole era and bring it forward in the brand. And it's all part of the plan. At this point, I'm going to hand this over to your fearless leader. Sure, fearless. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's all part of the plan. Do we remember the plan? Yeah. <laughs> this, should look this should look familiar to you. <laughs> to kind of quickly recap in two sentences. The big line at the top is what we're doing. It's our mission, right? It's revolution. That's the slide 
that came out of the work they were doing with Kinesis exactly. Like, it's just one word. We can say it in one word. Uh, and then the next phase is the things that we're doing over a really long period of time. So over 10 years, we really want to build a team to be revolutionary and be the most you know, powerful and badass team in automation. That's not going to change. All that's built on our values, which Jeff's already talked about extensively. Uh, and they're all real, and I'm looking at a giant mural of them right now, so they must be true. <laughs> um, and then we look at what we're doing for, for this year, right? What are we actually going to do? What are the steps that we're going to take in 2019 to get closer to that goal, to move us towards actually accomplishing all that, which is um, going to be really amazing and, and difficult. So we've got different sections. We've got all these different machines we're working on. We've got different types of products that we're work, working on developing, or, or maybe new things that we're interested in working on, like the Aquapos track. We're doing a lot in marketing and sales team and facilities, and, and we're doing stuff uh, in our services departments as well. All, all of you are part of this. Um, as you know from me putting in and highlighting different things that everybody's going to be contributing to, like everybody, this is a work that the whole team is going to be doing and contributing to. And today, we're going to talk about one item, which was has been there, which is called brand relaunch. Have any of you noticed that line? Any of you think about what it meant? <laughs> Here's the brand, Automation Resources Group. I'm, of course, very proud of it because it's really cool. And you know, we named it and made the logo. And we've revi been revising it slightly. Um, but let me ask you a question. Do we think that Automation Resources Group represents the ideas that Jeff was talking about? When you hear ARG, do you think about revolution? When you say Automation Resource or Resources Group, do you think about magicians? You think about functionalism? Because that's really what we've extracted out of the work that we're doing. That's what really what we're about. It's, those are the, the points of reference that we came up with because that's what we're excited about. That's really what's inside us. That's what this company stands for. So let's talk about names. <laughs> it's my policy not to read slides. So you can just take a moment and take it in. I, I will mention one. Number five says shorter is better. positive, it's pleasant to say. Do we think that Automation Resources Group is short and pleasant to say? You only have to spell it once in the phone. Thank you, Patrick. At A-U-T-R-E-S. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like this is a personal attack. <laughs> Is this hitting a little too close to home for you, Blackburn? <laughs> 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 it's memorable. It doesn't have a missing S, or maybe it does. Is it research? Research? <laughs> research? <laughs> research? Resources? Resources? Let me introduce you to Carl at Automation Resources. Resource. Automotive Resources. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is creating some... Otresgerf, yep, got <laughs> So yeah, uh, we're not hitting too many of the items on this list. So, it's time to launch, time to brand relaunch. I'm happy to share that Automation and Resources Group is now Loop. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a different company, that's our company now. As of this moment, our, co our team is called Loop, a loop. And we, Jeff will be here to explain a lot of the thinking behind it, but um, if you remember just two slides ago, it does fit a lot of those things. It does represent a lot of those things. And I'm very happy that we'll be having this as the new company name, and this will represent a lot more clearly what we're about and what we stand for. <laughs> You're all stunned, just as I said. <laughs> Jeff, you want to talk about this? I do. It's time to lose that second, what is it, second stage engine. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a lot about the brand and some of the details, but to kick things off, because this is a moment of launch, we're going to commemorate with a special, um, a special launch clock. Wow. Y'all will appreciate this. Very well designed. Um, it will run for 20 years, 
<laughs> and from this moment, it'll just keep counting up towards the future. All right. Okay, it has a pin on it. You can only pull the pin once. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes. So is everybody here? <laughs> and you'll see it does this little pattern. It's a grenade. You pull the pin, and it will just count the number of seconds and days since this moment. Oh, wow. How's the battery? I'll hold on to this pin. This useless pin. Put it on the keychain. Yeah. Put it back in, hurry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. It's counting up. Up to the future. <laughs> Let's talk about loop a little bit. Besides the fact that we just went from eight syllables to one. <laughs> Shorter is better and easier to say. Um, a loop is a device used by jewelers and by watchmakers to see the fundamental aspects, the most intricate details of a thing. It looks close in to find exactly where the most meaningful parts of the object are, free from distraction. And that in the same way that uh, this company, Loop, provides revolutionary improvement at every stage of the process because you are looking closely at what you're doing, you're finding what really matters, and you're pulling forth revolutionary improvements every time you take a look at something. It's time to imagine the power of a closer look. This brand was built to complement your mission of revolution, it's built on the ideas of your values, bringing those things to the forefront so that everybody who touches this brand feels this. It's also built to support your vision of going forth in the future. We want people to know the name Loop. We want them to think about it first when they need really smart automation solutions and they want to work with amazing, smart people. Currently, if you go to loop.team online, you will see a splash page, which we've already launched giving people information about this once this, uh, uh, in fact, tomorrow is the official date where we're making public announcements, so keep it to yourself internally until then. Um, we're gonna be launching some social media announcements, um, some email, and uh, directing people to this splash page, as well as putting uh, some information on your current website in the header, so that anyone who goes there has the opportunity to click on this page to get all the information they need. We're also gonna be handing you out some new updated swag. It's going to be pretty great. Socks. <laughs> Socks <are coming. laughs> um, we really wanted a brand that was versatile, that really provided a lot of life and attitude, even when presented in its most simplest form. <laughs> Something that made an impression in a lot of different media. It looks really sharp no matter how you present it. Welcome to Loop. It's a whole new era. Let's do this. All right, how about a round of applause for you? All right, high five. Woo. Does anybody have any questions? Please explain the logo. <laughs> Please explain the logo. Mm -hmm. Looks like an Who wants to take that uh, one? Yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back a slide. I'll talk about it. It's a good pattern for socks. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great on socks. <laughs> We wanted to capture something that really represented the meaning behind the name, that you're closing in on an area of viewpoint without being super direct about making it a circle. Um, there's also this other element of you work in automation, and so there's a reference to automation systems um, working together upon each other. There's also this sort of interesting building uh, construct visualization associated with it. Where things are sort of going up, building on each other, almost like a MC Escher uh, painting but really wanted to find this concept of something really ultra simple that presented the core elements of what made this thing great. Um, you're a team that works together, brings automation together, and takes a closer look. I like how it creates kind of a field of view right in the middle and you can see exactly into the most important thing. It's also humming into the control loop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess to talk about, <laughs> talk about more about the words, um, loop is the, at the fundamental piece of a lot of what we work on as controls engineers. That is not an accident that uh, loop, the word loop is in there. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the French word for wolf is loop, L-O-U-P. So that's a <laughs> hidden meaning uh, that you can enjoy uh, secretly. <laughs> As the wolf pack. It's clean. Clean. Very clean. Super clean. Do we have emojis yet? 
Black and white emojis. Right? We some, will. Yeah. We will have that ready for tomorrow. We forgot. Our clients are often very fearful of the brand relaunch. What? We can't change the name. We've been this for ten years, and um, you know their perception is that. Well. Well, <laughs> is that they have a lot of brand equity in the name, but uh, David, Carl, and Allison were fearless, went for it. So thank you. It's been super fun for us. Yeah. All right. Again, thanks to everybody at Kinesis for helping out. How about another round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Excited to do more. This is just the start of uh, what we're getting out there. So stay tuned. So yeah. Well, hi, Alyssa. Welcome back. Alyssa, what did you miss? Um, I cut out right when um, Dominic said that we were looking at the wrong screen. Oh jeez. Oh no. <laughs> what do you think of our new? I heard. I heard oh. about the new company name and the last part about the email migration. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We have it recorded, I'll play it and we can play it back for you. <laughs>